and we're back. We're back. Um, so I know I asked this of you weeks ago and I know we were supposed to talk about it last Wednesday. I apologize to our listeners that we didn't post last Wednesday. Um, RB, I promise we're going to be more consistent with you all. Um, but have you watched the most hated man on the internet? I have. And, um, I mean, I think my thoughts are the same as everyone else, which is a, how did I not know about this website? B, Mm -hmm. what the fuck? Like, yeah. What? (laughs) I, 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 I feel like I had so many emotions and confusion and just like, I was, there, there were so many things, but also Charlotte Laws, bad ass. Oh, love her. In, what was wild to me is like, she is kind of like the ultimate kind of scammer to a degree. Like when she was younger, mm-hmm. she was apparently like sneaking into celebrity parties and talking about how it's all about confidence. Like if you, you know, think that you should be there, then like you can make it happen kind of thing. Um, and then all of a sudden you have another guy who's also kind of a scammer, right? But like around the concept of revenge porn. And it was like literally two relentless forces going at each other at the same speed. And I was like, this is insane. Yeah. Um, but like, wow, if I was a mom, I want to be half as great as Charlotte Lost. I know. Like Kayla... Very lucky. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. So for our listeners who maybe have not watched this show yet, you absolutely should. I'm not going to lie. I was like, what is this? It's just another Netflix documentary, another true crime thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to lie. I kind of put it off. I didn't really want to watch it. I was like, ugh, again, here we go. Same shit that we see day (laughs) after day. This is the truth. I'm just being honest. And Mm -hmm. then I was like, okay, I got to sit down and I watch and watch this. So I sat down and I watched it and I was like enthralled. Um, so basically the, the Netflix show do, limited series documentary, whatever we're calling it now, it's called the most hated man on the internet. It is about a guy, his name is Hunter Moore and he created a website back in like 2011, I believe it was called mm-hmm. is anyone up.com. And the idea here was that random people could just submit photos, um, specifically nude photos of their exes or whoever it was, it's just anyone that they really knew, um, you know, that would then go up on this website. But not only was it just your photo, but it was your photo, it was your name, and it was also your social media profiles, which at the time, and then eventually, mm-hmm. eventually he added your address and like a map to your house. But- and phone number. And phone number. So like, let's say, you know, I get really pissed off at Maddie. I decide that I'm going to send those shots that she sent me of her tits the other day to <laughs> is anyone else? <laughs> that, I wish that happened. It didn't happen. But. You know what though? Uh, I really had to sit there because like Pierre and I were talking about this. Um, like a, this was like the wild, wild west of the internet days yeah. right? where the internet and social media was coming about where people didn't really know how this could go, where this could go. People wanted political careers. And if they had sent nudes at any point in time, their political careers could be ruined. We're looking right? at you, Michael I feel like everyone, Basically, basically at, at this point in time, though, I think like everyone pretty much has nudes out there. So like, I don't think it's like as fucking like terrible as it was back. I'm sure it is very traumatizing for people who've gone through the experience, but I'm trying to say like, it isn't as severe, I think, as it was socially back then. Right. And so like little Pierre and I were sitting on the couch and we're watching this and I was like, oh, it's a good thing. Like, you know, when we were dating, we didn't send each other nudes back and forth because we didn't. Pierre was always like, no, like never, like absolutely adamantly, like no way in hell. And, um, he was like, you don't have any nudes out there, do you? And I had to pause for a second. I was like, and he literally, his eyes just got more and more intense. Like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, wait, I just, I need to think about it for a second. <laughs> Luckily I don't, I never took any needs, never sent anything, but um, it really gets you thinking like as someone who's like never done it, I, I still had to like squint my eyes and try to remember as far back as I could be like, have I ever sent anything to anyone? <laughs> so, do you know, what's really funny um, is that first of all, I have received one dick pic in my life. Interesting. Okay. 
Okay. I okay. married the guy. Um, and I kind of, okay. I wasn't actually interested in seeing the dick pic. I was just like, I wonder how much this guy likes me if I ask him for a dick pic, will he send it? Sorry, Rosemary. I know that you listen. Your son did send me a dick pic once. Um, that's number one. But, um, and I, I, like, I deleted it. I didn't keep it or anything like that. Again, it was truly just like, does this guy really like me enough to do this? Because yeah. I had never received yeah. one until that point. Uh, and that was actually in 2012. So around the time that is anyone up was, was up. Um, I have never sent any kind of nude photos in my life. A, that's just not my style, but B, I'm so fucking fearful of just people and whatever. Yeah. However, oh God. when I was in, when I was on Fire Island, like two weeks ago, before oh, I was Lord, the here show, we go. Um, there was an outdoor shower. Mm-hmm. And so, Jackie, if you're listening, I did this at your bachelor party. Um, I don't know. I We were doing shots, man. Things were weird. And so I just was like, hey. like, I, But here's the thing. I was very, very careful to not put my face in it. Interesting. So that was the first time I ever sent, like, any form of it. And it was just my boobs. So, like, okay. not much. Like, nobody would be that excited about it. But um, until I get my boob job, just wait. But it was so funny because then I came home and like immediately watched the show and I was like, oh, oh, fuck. What have I done? <laughs> what? what um, I but done? anyway, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So hold on. For, for the rest of the context. Oh, I just got lip gloss all over my, my mic. I'm going to put this puppy back on. I'm going to put that puppy back on. So, um, okay. So basically this guy, he launched his website and it, you know, it started off, I think within the scene scene, which is like emo bands mm -hmm. and I don't know, people with facial yeah. piercings um, back in the 2010s. And then this, it started to just kind of, um, I guess, become a lot more, not mainstream, but there were just more people on that that claim that they have never sent a nude. I think what's crazy to me is that the origins of this website started out of his own anger and like viciousness yeah. towards his ex of wanting to destroy a woman that broke his heart. Well, like I mean, crazy. I feel like it's like interesting, but then as you watch it and you like learn more about his name is Hunter Moore. Uh, yeah. As you learn more about Hunter Moore, you're like, oh, oh, that that's how this started. Makes sense. Um, but OK, long story short, this guy fucked with the wrong girl. Her mom, Charlotte Laws, decided she was taking this motherfucker down and she basically got the FBI to investigate him. They found out that he was hacking into people's emails and that's how he was finding a lot of these nude photos that were not actually sent anywhere that exactly. were posted on the news and that's how he was taken down blah 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 blah. the crazy shit though is that this guy is walking around california uh no he's actually in florida now oh he's in florida oh on brand okay makes sense it's probably yeah. where he was meant to be yeah. born but um <laughs> okay so now this this whole concept he basically like was the first internet troll hundred percent. Yes. He was the, like, it was just the, the shit that he would say to yeah, people. He was like the first, like, God, like, like Twitter troll to the nth degree. Almost like the stuff. That, yeah. The stuff that he said though, just the, the, the way that he said it, I'm like, he was vicious. He was like really vicious. God. I think also I felt really bad. There was a segue. There was a small s sort of a short, not short story, but story within the larger story of Butthole Girl. <laughs> Which is sorry, an awful I don't mean to laugh. Name. And I'm sorry to laugh. laugh. But also like, does she really, is she really considered a victim? She, um, she was part of it. She said she was sad when it came down, when she was no longer Butthole Girl. Like, I think it's so sad that she like lost custody of her children and stuff. But like. Yeah. I'm not so sure she's that sad that she went through that experience. Yeah. I mean, that story in and of itself, that was kind of crazy. But I do think what's awful is that he monetized off of her content and didn't really give her a dime. He only offered her a t-shirt. I think that's what was kind of crazy about it all. And for context for listeners who may have not watched the documentary or docuseries, uh, Hunter Moore, there's this girl named Butthole Girl. She was a cam girl. Apparently she, you know, during one of her cam sessions with like a whole bunch of other girls, like stuck something up her butt. They took a screenshot. They posted it on, um, is anyone up? Uh, she lost custody of her kids for doing that. Which is so sad. And then which is honestly awful. It's atrocious. Like I really do feel for her in that regard. Um, but then, then she started to 
brand herself really as butt hole girl and started to put other things up her butt and sharing. She said a moose. She put a moose bottle up her butt, like moose, like hair moose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did do that. Yes. Um, Apparently she was on like a video with Hunter Moore and he told her to do it again. And he apparently videotaped it or like recorded it while they were on Zoom and then posted it somewhere or sold it somewhere to another adult website. Um, He did her real dirty. But anyway, he was really all about like using women for content. And I think what's crazy is like, A, also what was the security like for Gmail at the time? Like the way that they were able to like hack into these people's accounts was really base level. So like, I don't know, there's a part of me too that felt like Google do better. (laughs) Like, like in regards to that time period. But the people, Um, but the the people people were were actually like giving the... Too fun to, to, to Gary, how what is his name? How many, Gary, <laughs> Gary Jones or something like that. Yeah. 815. No, but, but the fact is like the, the people were giving the code up themselves. So I don't think that it's necessarily like a Gmail problem. Yeah. But now they have yes. du- dual f- two factor authentication. Yeah. Sorry. Two factor, two fact is what we call it. Um, highly recommend for folks who have Gmail or other accounts to do two factor authentication for everything that they have for every internet account. Um, just keep your shit safe. Um, hackers are real wild these days, real wild and out. Um, but like this was really interesting because or what I found intriguing about this whole docuseries was around the revenge porn concept, because this really seems like sort of the start of revenge porn, right? I feel like we, our generation really knows more about revenge porn because of the celebrity stuff that's been coming out. In particular, I'm thinking of China, Black China and um, Rob Kardashian, where he basically posted her naked pictures and it became like a revenge porn law or or case lawsuit in California. Um, Apparently there are no federal laws for revenge porn. Can you believe that? I I get considering where we are socially. Crazy. Mm-hmm. But I'm also like not surprised. I mean, we literally just overturned Roe versus Wade. So that's true. The incompetence of our government is pretty massive. So I'll I'll give you um, that. Like I'm kind of like, oh well, do I am I surprised? No, I'm not that surprised. Um yeah. I guess though my question is, right? Like when you think about like we talked about the Pam and Tommy thing, we talked about how, you know, like yeah. a a judge ruled that Pamela Anderson was a public figure and therefore her body was the like the property of the public or something crazy like that. Um mm-hmm. I guess what I'm saying is like I'm certainly not that surprised that that's not already in place. I I also think like back then again, like the internet was, I think it's still pretty fucking lawless, right? Yeah. Um in a lot of ways. But yeah. at the time, I think that horrified me the most is, you know, look, I think that the, obviously the idea of like posting, posting someone's nudes when they don't condone it is disgusting. I think that at the time people were probably, I, I'm not somebody, so I don't, who's done this, so I don't know, like, again, I'm married. Right. And I would still never to this day put my face in a photo that was nude unless I was comfortable with that potentially being out there. Like, again, I'm I'm married. Right. And I still wouldn't Mm -hmm. do that. So for me, it's like, I'm not, I'm not victim shaming. I think it's disgusting what happened to these people. But also, like, if you see that this is happening and you know that this is happening, like, trust no one. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just like, it just feels a little bit like the, the, like the volume of whatever. And I know a lot of them were hacked and blah, 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 but still, I don't know. It just, I would also never have a naked, like a nude photo on any device or on any platform, like cloud platform at all. Because remember, I think it was a few years back where the iCloud hacking for actors was happening. I think it was like J-Law had her photos hacked. Um, who else? There was like so many that got hacked during that, um, that year. Vanessa Hudgens. It Vanessa was called the Fappening. Yes. Yes. The fa- it's just the Fappening. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but that's what they called it. Yeah. When you're fat, like you're fapping, like you're rubbing one out. Oh. Uh, How did. <laughs> I don't know. Is that what it's called? It's called it yeah, jerking you... off. Yeah. But like fapping, it's like a, another terminology for it, I guess, but the fappening that's, 
That's interesting. People are creative. I'll give them that. <laughs> also, sorry. I, I apologize if you all can hear that. I can't hear anything. I, my, okay. My neighbor's raging right now. He's playing everybody shot, 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 shot. He's also like a 55 year old man raging next door. Sorry. I just hear it. I'm, I'm here for shit. it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I was just a little worried. Um, but yeah, no. So the fapping happened. Um, but no. So I, I feel like we can like dissect all of this, right? So butthole girl. Yeah. Like I, I felt very, I felt bad for her about her children and all that stuff. But like the fact that she continued to be a part of the community and she said, I was sad yeah. when it came down and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I, I question a lot of things. Yeah. In regards well, I think to that, that. There was a part of like, she had like an audience. So like in a way she could like, get them to come back to like her cam girl site, I'm sure, and be able to monetize it to some degree. So there was an aspect of like being able to monetize, monetize off of the popularity that she gained from as anyone up. So that's number one. Yeah. Oh, all right. Say what you want to say, girl. Like no, I was your, gonna say, your like, head girl, did like a gonna... 180 there. I was going to say like, girl, if you're going to do shit like that, like I would... I just destiny. That was her name on the show. Anyway, like she didn't seem like the most business savvy person. Fair enough. I mean, I don't know. Sad, but, but also like, she's kind of fucking dumb. Like you see that this guy refused to take your page down with your children. You were doing this for your kids, blah, blah, blah. And then you, you do it again. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. The on, kids thing. Like that was the reason Skype? why. Yeah. But like you well, do also, it on Skype. Like what the fuck did you think? Like, I'm sorry. I just don't think she's that smart. I also think that there's a difference between like when you're in the moment of doing something and then when you kind of look back, you're like, what the fuck did I agree to? Right? Like, I think she probably hyperventilated and freaked out because of the aspect of her kids, which I completely forgot about weirdly enough that like uh, for context for our listeners, um, when the original butthole photo kind of came out, um, the socials that had been screenshot was of photos of her children were up, mm -hmm. um, which she had begged and begged him to remove the children from it, which by the way, that should have been like, there Legal. should have been some kind of, yeah, there should have been some kind of law there to at least protect the children from being on sort of like a pornographic website. Right. Um, and basically she agreed to put additional content on there if he would remove it or change it, which he agreed to. So I'm sure that there was a level of desperation there. Um, I actually want to segue really quickly to his girlfriend at the time. Who oh, yeah. what I, name again? I don't Casey. fucking know. I don't fucking Callie. care. I love that she tried to come on and make herself seem like the innocent angel that she was. I don't think she was. No. Oh my like, god, the whole time me. I was just like, first of all, she's got some work done. That's number one. Not mad at how she looks. I think she looks great. Um, her lips look excellent. She kind of looks like an Angelina <laughs> Jolie now. I don't know if you noticed that, but um, no. Yeah, she, of course she would like, like look at that. Like, bitch, like, what are you doing on this show? Like, are you trying to come off as like a fucking moron? Because yeah. for you to be like, I just wanted to believe that he wasn't doing anything wrong. And it's like this Fuck guy is literally off telling people to kill themselves he no. is literally responsible for all this shit no she was a loser she the and thing that got me was when she then said at the end of the docuseries like oh then i like went on facebook one day and realized that like there yeah. were these messages that i didn't have access to and i decided to look through them and i saw all these people who were like really desperate and said like bitch no, fuck you. All of a sudden at the end when he was like about to be taken to prison, you saw these messages. Get the fuck out of here. Well, the other thing that, that I was confused about was how like the whole time he was portrayed as like this like single guy that was like out making right. out with and fucking all these girls and blah, 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 blah. And then like Casey or whatever the hell her name is, is at home. I don't know. I was, I was very confused no. by the girlfriend. No. I was not impressed by her. I was just like, you not actually look really dumb. But um, I feel like we should talk about Charlotte. Oh, I know. And also that random Marine man that like took this guy down and Charlotte okay. fucked it all up. 
So I, this is actually hilarious to me. Let's talk about the Marine guy, the one who has that anti-bullying website. So for context for our listeners, um, it got to a point where there was this gentleman who worked in IT security and he found this website and he, he was like, this is disgusting. This is clearly bullying. He found out the same thing as Charlotte Laws did, that clearly these women were being, you know, put on there and like all this disgusting and bullying comments that were being put on there. He, he was like so anti against it. And um, he ended up like sneaking his way into working with Hunter Moore and uh, basically told Hunter Moore that like, oh, there's like actual child pornography on here because you can't figure out if these girls are underage or not, which would get you in trouble. And it was also around the time that the FBI was getting clo- like knocking a lot more frequently, which freaked Hunter Moore out. So he agreed to sell the rights of the website to this Marine guy. Now, here's the thing that I thought was fucking hilarious, and I made the comment to Pierre. So they're talking about the background of this Marine guy, and he's like, I hate bullying. And they talk about his background story of like how he was like extremely bullied when he was a kid, how his dad, I guess, was like an alcoholic and like beat the shit out of him and this, this, and that. And then like Hunter Moore, who like clearly has mom issues, like hates women, like, and I literally made the joke. I was like, oh my God, it's mommy issues versus daddy issues. Fight. <laughs> Like, let's see. Oh my God, knock the other. <laughs> it was, that's literally all I could think of. And mind you, I was smoking at the time too. So like, that's probably like why my mind was just like on Ooh. a different plane entirely. But I was like, wow, this is literally people's trauma playing out in real time. Like mo- severe mommy issues. Clearly you hate your mother and clearly had like a fucked up relationship with her. Hence why you hate women and came up with this website. And over here you have the guy who like is completely anti-bullying because he was bullied and abused by his father. So it's literally Ooh. mommy issues versus daddy issues. <laughs> Just being honest. Why haven't you like tweeted about this from our podcast account? I, I will happily do so this week. No, I think you need to do that like now. Okay. Well, once we're well, done right recording. After this, but right, right after, after this, this I promise. Um, but yeah, no. Oh my God. No, that's a hundred percent true. So, okay. So for all of our listeners, basically there's this like Marine guy. He comes in, you know, Hunter reach out to him to advertise because he advertise, owned a bunch yes. of websites and he was like, Hey, do you want to advertise on is anyone up.com? He goes to it, blah, blah, blah. He's it's horrifying. This guy has a lot of trauma in his life, as Maddie mentioned, all the above. Basically, he made his mission to take this guy down. He's trying to take this guy down, a hundred more down, while Charlotte Laws, who's this like housewife, who has this like amazing British husband who's an attorney that's like badass when he needs to be, but also like so arm's length when he needs to be. And I kind of admire the shit out of it. It's amazing. But also, why didn't they tell him at the beginning of all of this? Which is kind of crazy to me too. Like well, if they because had I think told that, him at like, the beginning, he could have intervened. But the daughter didn't want um, the, the dad. stepdad to know dad. that she had taken nudies, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he was so badass. You guys have to watch it where he was just like, hi, I'm an attorney. My stepdaughter has been trying relentlessly to get her photos taken down. Blah, 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 blah. Um, she, you know, what was it like? Copyright photos or, or like IP. Copyright law is very clear. She yeah. owns the copyright. Hunter does not. She did not give him the permission Mm-hmm. And and he was just like, as my stepdaughter, her attorney fees will be free. Mm-hmm. And I assure you that Hunter doesn't want to like rack whatever. It, it, it was just like the way that he was like so G. chill. I was like, was you are G. so fucking cool. Yeah. Um, but anyway, then he has this like tiny little housewife woman who, or, or housewife. Literally Charlotte made Laws, it her who, fucking life mission to destroy Hunter Moore. Like, I like aspire to be Charlotte Laws one day. I thought it was amazing. How I she, feel like, like I see him. you. I see you in her though, for sure. Like I could see <laughs> this being you. Like when someone wrongs you or wrongs someone in your life, like I could see yeah. you going this fucking far. Yeah. I'll put you in a bad mood. For sure. <laughs> if I'm in a bad mood, you're in a bad mood, motherfucker. I'll kill you. <laughs> Emotionally. <laughs> My God, this is going to come up in my trial one day, isn't it? Oh, um, stop. <laughs> I'll kill you emotionally. That's what I was trying to say. No, but seriously. Um, yeah, Charlotte was the badass. So she apparently like did this crazy ass, uh, not analysis, but investigation into Hunter Moore, is anyone up.com. And then she fucked up the Marines approach to taking this guy down. Right. So basically the Marine managed to like put Hunter basically in a chokehold and was like, dude, sell me the website write an apology letter. I'm going to redirect is anyone up.com to bullyville.com and you're done. 
And then he went on Dr. F- no, Anderson Cooper. No, it was Anderson Cooper. Um, Hunter Moore. And then Charlotte Laws decides that she is going to call in. No, I think it was Dr. Phil. Anyway, that she was It was going some to call other in. website. So Anderson Cooper is where he came out and there were those two other women that had been victims to the website. Yes. And clearly he had no remorse and he snapped. And he was like, well, you know, like, I don't know these women. It's not personal, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, and now we're right here next to you. It is kind of personal. Mm-hmm. And then there was, I think it was CNN or some other news situation that Hunter Moore went on. And that's when they had Charlotte, Charlotte Laws down. Yep. Yeah. And so Charlotte Laws came lost on. it. Charlotte Laws came on and she basically just r- ruined him. And then yeah. he lost his fucking mind. And then the Marine was like, what the fuck? I just finished this guy off. And then Charlotte Laws came in and she agitated him. And then he was like, I'm coming back and I'm better than ever. Um, but I love how scrappy and he basically. She- but then he decided with this next version that he was going to have like a little map showcasing where these people lived. Like he was going to like exacerbate what like ruin lives. Was perfect. Exactly. And at one point with he this, tweeted, like, the news site is going to cause murders. Ha ha. Yeah. I think exactly. that scared me. It was just like how awful out there. Yeah. People are not even just him. Mm-hmm. He had like a cult following. People were like, you're our father. Oh, we love you. Blah, blah, blah. I, I wonder how Alex Cooper feels about people calling her the father now. Cause that's what I thought. And, uh, while I was watching this and I was like, Ooh, that's kind of a reference to this guy. And he was like the OG, the father of the family. Ooh, interesting. I didn't even think about it. Wait, give context to our listeners on who Alex Cooper is. Alex Cooper. She's the host of call her daddy, AKA Mm -hmm. like literally the second or third most popular podcast in the world. And Mm -hmm. her listeners call her the father. Um, I don't know. Interesting. But it's like, she's like the feminist version though of Hunter Moore though. Is she? Pretty sure she was talking about getting fucked in the ass and like dildos and shit up until very recently where she decided she was. Feminists don't like to get fucked. I I don't know. Is that that true? I mean, like she's kind of like the the feminist version version of it. No way. Okay, I guess not. Maybe I'm just really? not listen to her enough. Well, I see that she, like, talks about, like, based off of her, like, Instagram and shit and the snippets that I do see. Because she has, like, another podcast, too. I think it's called, like, Adulting. She does? Yeah, there's, like, another podcast. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wait. Oh, I didn't know that. Um. She, anyway, she... Yeah, she, like... I feel like kind of... Paid, she really paved the way for a lot of women to be super authentic in podcasts. I think she's great. Um, her podcast taken a very, very different turn than it, you know, it was like a sex podcast originally. Yes. Sorry. I'm trying to like figure out, but yeah. So anyway, I, I just think that's really interesting, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I, the, so long story short is that Hunter Moore ends up getting indicted and charged by the FBI for basically hacking um, because Mm -hmm. they were able to prove that he was working with someone in Studio City, motherfucker, um, Charles something, to, um, they were hacking into Gmail accounts, taking nudies and then just posting them and pretending, quote unquote, like somebody, you know, submitted them anonymously. So he, I think he served like three years or like two and a half years or something, 30 months, so two and a half years in prison. And now apparently he's living in Florida. He's apparently living a super, super chill life. Netflix. Okay. So in the documentary, they said that he had originally agreed to be in the documentary and then he changed his mind at the last minute. Exactly. You know exactly what he's doing, right? Well, what is he doing? What do you mean? He's going to fucking make his own version of this story. Oh, a hundred percent. Probably he's going to like sell the rights or something to like Hulu and make a shit ton of money. And who's going to come out with a competing fucking documentary. Exactly. So it's like, I feel like whoever wrote this, like, I kind of feel like you or wrote it or pitched it or filmed it or whatever it was. Like, I feel like you thought that you were like bringing this to light, which you did to a degree. But at the same time, I also feel like you're kind of exacerbating his ability. Oh my God, I mistook the people, by the way. Sorry, I like literally went on a little rampage. I'm listening to you, of course, but um, almost adult things with Violet Benson. I don't know why I mistake them for each other. 
Okay. Anyways, continue. The fuck I'm is sorry. That? It's another girl who reminds me of Alex Cooper. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah. I was like, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think so to go back to the whole idea of like revenge porn, I feel like now that shit would not be taught. Like the stuff that he was saying, the visceral hate that he was spewing would not, not like be he's... tolerated anymore on like Twitter or anything like that. Yeah. I also think that it's, I think it's really scary to think about. Like, I hope like we as a society have evolved from that kind of thinking, but know. like he catered to a lot of people who I think had some like severe mommy issues. Um, and also kind of borderline around like purity culture, like thinking that all of these women who sent out nudes were whores when in actuality, he, he, him and his friend were the ones who were hacking into women's accounts. Um, it was also a different time period where like victim, sh- victim shaming was so real. So fucking real. I think it's and, still like, a thing. I oh, hundred percent it is. But at least like victim shaming as a term is like a thing that's well known now. You know what I mean? True. Yep. Versus before, I'd never heard the term victim shaming before ever. I guess that's true. Like the 2000s. Yeah. I mean, it's really sad that, yeah. you know, these women were, it was just like, oh, sorry. So I'm going to, you know, you can't do anything about it. Um, and I believe that the trial didn't happen for like two and a half or it actually might've been three or four years after, after, you know, all this happened, which is just crazy. Can you imagine like your fucking nude photo is up there for the world to see people are losing jobs, all these things for three to four years before this guy even, you know, goes to trial. I, I Well, the website had gotten taken down though before he went to trial. Oh, true, true, true. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. But because of the Marine, thank God. It, it, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. The, I just thought it was thing. interesting that like the FBI took fucking forever and a day and they said it, they were like, it's just going to take time. And it's just because of like the bureaucracy, but there are people to your point, like lives that are being destroyed in real time with this stuff coming in. Like yeah. to hear these victims stories is like really heartbreaking, right? Like lives being ruined, losing their jobs, like all of these things just because they trusted the wrong person or, you know, they got their account hacked. It wasn't even something that 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 so much worse, they shared, right? which is so awful, just absolutely fucking awful. And I think what's like crazy is, you know, we hear about revenge porn, and I feel like we don't realize like how prevalent it really is. Um, so I was actually doing some research, as we all know. Um, so like I said, there are waiting no for this moment, <laughs> waiting for it. Uh, so there are no federal laws. Um, but pretty much there are state by state laws, but however, there are four states that currently do not have legislation around revenge porn. Okay. Which and ones are they? Wyoming, Mississippi, not surprising. Not surprising. South Carolina, and not Massachusetts. Surprising. Very surprising. I know that, that seems a little crazy to me that Massachusetts out of all of these doesn't have one. I always um, knew I fucking hated Boston. <laughs> Boston. I hate Boston. Boston. Um, I've only been once. It was a pleasant, uh, pleasant city for me to be in just because of the rich like history. It. But yeah, I mean, ugh, yikes. That's Not a bad. tough one. Um, um, wait, that's shocking. Right. And here's the other interesting thing about one in 25 Americans are either threatened with or are victims of non-consensual image sharing slash revenge porn, as is the correct terminology for it in my mind. Um, it's more commonly known, right? Um, and it equates to roughly 10 million Americans. And this is according to a study that was published by the Data and Society Research Institute. So 10 million Americans ha- are victims to revenge porn. 10 million. 10 million. Now, Here's where things get a little bit more tricky. The numbers were found as part of a larger study, and it showed that 47% of Americans were victims of online harassment, which basically is kind of synonymous. They're not synonymous, but like in line with the revenge porn aspect. The numbers also show that women under 30, minorities, and members of the LGBTQ community are much more likely to be threatened with revenge porn than men. But when it comes to actually posting these photos... So being threatened is one thing, but when it actually comes to posting, the numbers are pretty equivalent across the different like uh, identity groups, if you will. Exactly. Um, And then another interesting thing that I was reading about is how during the pandemic, revenge porn cases actually increased by like 4X, 5X. 
What? Um, Why? So in 2019, about 680, there were about 681 revenge porn cases that were known of. And in 2020, there were 3,146 revenge porn cases. Do they have any like insights as to why? Well, I think a lot of people angry home inside angry, a lot of like issues, unresolved, like psychological issues that may have popped up or there are a lot more breakups because people either like can't see each other or you're in the house with your significant other. Um, things Mm. may have gotten like ugly Mm. or nasty could have led to an increase in that. Who knows? People are bored, nothing else to do. And I guess a lot of people also were probably like sending more photos. Yeah. A hundred percent. Interesting. Yeah, it's like, especially if you're not a well-adjusted human, I could totally imagine this being an option of, uh, of like wanting to hurt someone. Yeah. Just to add We're another just thing crazy. to the list as to why we can never risk getting divorced. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think it's, it's crazy that people think that this is like a good Normal, way of okay, seeking out revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, like what made you feel like sharing a naked photo? Basically you built a relationship with this person or some kind of relationship. There was a level of trust between you two and you decide out of malice for this person because it no longer worked out that it's a good idea to now share this person's photo. I just, I don't get it. But I also feel like I look at the good in people all the time. So like my head doesn't want to believe that this kind of disgustingness exists in the world. I mean, it definitely exists as we know, but like we really know. Um, Maddie, I think that we give people a lot of credit. And I think in general, like the human race, I think we just suck. I think that, no, honestly, I think in general (laughs) people, people are just fucking nasty and people just want to see other people miserable and like there are times when i'm like yeah misery loves company i'm really happy that you're in a bad mood so i know it's not the same but i'm just saying like on a much smaller scale i can understand being like hey i want you to be unhappy too yeah damn i just yeah i mean i think at the end of the day though I think what I loved most about this documentary was a, this fucker and his friend both went to jail for the shit that they did. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, he's cut off from being able to create this kind of monstrosity ever again, but also seeing the love of a mother for their child. But I also think at some point it like went beyond it, that. And then it just yeah, became it an obsession. Weird. Like, let's be it's real. It was a little weird at one point. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, okay. Like your daughter's things came down. Like, I appreciate that she did it, but I was like, oh, okay. I at know. what point I, I was stop? Like, I was like, this is kind of a little obsessive home girl, but, um, you know, it, it was, I would say it's like a good fruitful obsession. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. Um, and to like see sort of like a grassroots effort actually play out well. Yeah. I, I just thought that there great. were like multiple people that were trying to f- fucking take down Hunter more. Oh yeah. And then and I'm happened. not going to get over, and I'm not going to get over the mommy dad, the mommy issues versus daddy issues. And clearly Fight. the daddy issues went out. Fight. <laughs> K.O. <laughs> I just literally, all I could think of was Mortal Kombat. Literally in my head, I could hear the Mortal Kombat music playing. And I was oh, like, God. mommy issues versus daddy issues. Fight. <laughs> just good it <laughs> i can't wait till mark about that so later good. he's gonna die but um yeah no i think i i i am personally inclined to think that hunter moore we have not seen the last of him and i think he's about to come out with something very soon <sighs> disgusting yeah i mean of course, he's he's a... he hasn't done anything on the black web or, or the dark web already you know Mm, I think that would be stupid. I think that the way that he's going to monetize and get celebrity and stuff is to come back into the public eye in a way that doesn't, you know, open him up to legal. Well, wasn't part of like the legal proceedings was that he could no longer um, be on social media. No, I think he's on social media. I think he was like, there was like a social for... media ban as part of his. Um... Oh, it was a brief ban. Yeah, exactly. He's back on. Oh, wait. No, he's... Man. I could have sworn as part of, like, the legal proceedings, um, part of his uh, sentence was was that he... 
Okay. Yeah. He was, but I think two point, I think it was brief. I don't think it was like a permanent ban. Like they can't keep him off the internet. He's going to find a way to get on the internet anyway. I, but I, I'm telling you, I don't think that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to come back and I think he's going to come back in a way that he cannot be prosecuted because he just wants notoriety. He just wants to be famous. I mean, that's and I fair. bet you he's just going to come back and be like, hey, bitches, this is my side of the story. Because I'm pretty sure that, like, I saw that he tweeted or something like that. Like, he's very yeah. quiet I'm... on the internet, but I think that he said something like, yeah, you think you know me, but like, you have no idea. This is the diary of Hunter Moore. Uh, no, that, uh, I wish this would have said that would have been really smart. But no, he's uh, like, I think he's, he's coming out with something. I'm telling you. I mean, yeah. I'll I'm like, bet you $10 right now over it. Um, I think he, like, I wonder if he were to come out with something similar now, would he still have the same level of audience as he did before? Yeah, I think he will. I just would hope, I think like, as a more. society, collectively, like, we've, like, all gotten to a better place psychologically where this wouldn't be a thing and people would want to do the right thing. But you know, there's also a part of me too, that feels like there are a lot of sickos out there who would love to see women be punished. Um, it's not just women, possible. it's women and men. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, well. I just, sorry. totally. I just agree with that. that. No, I, I think a hundred percent women, people... men, they, them, people who don't fall within the gender binaries. It's everyone. Um, but it's just crazy. I would hope that like people wouldn't be as hateful, but I guess, damn. I think that he is going to have more followers than ever because now there's going to be a lot of people that were exposed to this documentary that are going to follow him, that are going to want to know what's happening. And so he's going to get more mm. notoriety than anything. I think that we all are just playing into his, um, his fantasy of having power and whatever. And I don't, and there are some mean fucking people out there is all I'm going to say. That's true. So, um, well, to end this, I'm going to say fuck Hunter Moore fuck and fuck you, anyone who, who like worships him or is part of that cult and who believes in, you know, hateful and like vitriol filled bullshit. Um, fuck all y'all. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> fuck all y'all. Anyways, um, we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.